Hello, welcome back. In the previous class on on denoting, we have seen Russell's theory, which claims that there are two claims for an indefinite description and three claims for a definite description. And in today's class, we are going to apply this theory in the case of the puzzles, the puzzle about indesignability of identicals, that of the breach of law of excluded middle and also that of negative existentials. So we'll take up the puzzles one by one and apply the theory and we'll test the theory for its success in puzzles. And Russell claims that a theory can be tested for its reliability when applied to puzzles. And that's what we are going to do exactly in today's class. Coming to the first case, that's about the indiscernibility of identicals. We have seen that in the statement, George Ford wished to know whether Scott was the author of Waverly. We have seen that since Scott was the author of Waverly, the meaning of George Ford wished to know whether Scott was the author of Waverly is equivalent to George Ford wished to know whether Scott is Scott. Now, the definite description here is the author of Waverly. So, according to Russell's theory, there must be three claims in the definite description the author of Waverly. The first one is the existential claim, the second one is the uniqueness claim, and the third one is the predicative claim. So, coming to the first claim, it must assert that there is an entity who wrote Waverly. That's the existential claim. And as far as the uniqueness claim is concerned, it must assert that one and only one entity wrote Waverly. And as a predicative claim, it must claim that that entity is Scott. So the meaning of the statement, George Ford wished to know whether Scott is the author of Waverly becomes George Ford wished to know whether a person wrote Waverly and also on one and only person wrote Waverly and that person is Scott. And this meaning of the statement is totally different from the meaning that George Ford wished to know whether Scott is Scott. So when we get into the depth grammar of the definite description, that is the author of Waverly, it's not directly referring to a person called Scott, but it's referring to a person or it's describing a person through three claims. That is a person wrote Waverly and only one person wrote Waverly and that person is Scott. So this is the difference between these two statements. So we can see that the theory is successful in case of the problem of indiscernibility of identical. Now coming to the breach of excluded middle, the theory of excluded middle. We have taken the example in the puzzle that the present king of Francis Balch. And the different description here is the present king, the present king of France. Then again as per Russell's theory, it must have three claims. One is the existential claim and that must assert that there is a king for France. And the second claim is the uniqueness claim, that is there is one and only one king for France. And third one is the predicative claim that that king is bald. So three claims, there is a king for France, the existential claim, there is only one king for France, that's the uniqueness claim and that king is bald, that's the predicative claim. And if we apply this theory in the statement, the present king of France is bald, we are asserting three things. As seen earlier, there is a present king, which is actually false. And there is only one king. And also that king is bald. Since this is a conjunctive statement, conjunction of three statements, that there is a king, there is only one king and that king is France. A and B and C. It's a conjunctive statement. A compound statement having three conjuncts. And one of its conjunct is false. That is, there is a king for France. That's the existential claim is false. If in a conjunctive statement having three conjuncts, if one conjunct is false, then the whole statement is false. So the statement, the present king of France is bald, is false since there is no king for France. Then what about the statement, the present king of France is not bald? That also must make three claims. 
that is there is a king for France and there is only one king for France and that king is not Balch. So here also the statement is false because the existential claim is false. There is no king for France. Here also again it is a conjunctive statement having three conjuncts. The first conjunct which is the existential claim that is the is a king for France is false. So since that conjunct is false the whole statement is false. So we can see that both the statements the present king of France is bald as well as the statement the present king of France is not bald both are false. So the result says that the true denial of the present king of France is bald. The true denial of the statement the present king of France is bald is not that the present king of France is not bald. The true denial is it is not the case that the present king of France is bald. So it is a negation of the first statement, not that it is not bald. The meanings are different. So it is because we did not get into the depth grammar of the statement, we felt that the present king of France must be found in either of the sets. Now we can see that the theory of different description is actually applicable in the case of or it is successful in the case of the law of excluded middle also. Now moving on to the theory of negative existentials. In that case we have seen that unicorn does not exist. It actually asserts the existence of unicorn in one hand and denies it on the other. So it is an indefinite description. Unicorns does not exist. There is no the. We can say that no unicorns exist it's in, in that fashion. So it, since it is uh, using no, it is an indefinite description. So there must be two claims. The first one is the existential claim and the second one is the predicative claim. As it is indefinite description, there are only two claims, the existential claim as well as the uniqueness claim. And according to the existential claim, there must be an entity called X. That is the existential claim. And secondly, the predicate claim that entity is a unicorn. So you can represent it symbolically as at least one next such that not US. So you can rephrase the statement unicorn does not exist using these two claims. First is an existential claim which claims that there exists an X. That is the existential claim. And the predicate claim that that X is unicorn and that does not exist. There is no existence. So if you symbolize it, it becomes there exists an X such that negation UX. If you look at it too deeply, this is not the actual translation of the statement unicorns does not exist. The meaning of the statement unicorn does not exist is actually the denial of the statement unicorn exist. Unicorns exist you can symbolize in the way at least one x such that ux. At least one x is the existential claim there is an x and the predicative claim that x is unicorn. And if you deny it then it becomes there is no such x that it can be called a unicorn. So it can be represented as negation at least one x such that ux. So it becomes there is no x that is the existential claim such that x is unicorn. So this is different from the previous statement. So there is no assertion there. There, is, there exists nothing which can be called unicorn. So there is no assertion. That assertion disappeared. And we can see that the theory is successful in case of negative existentials also. Now if you sum up the theory of descriptions we can see that the genuine proper names, as far as the genuine proper names are concerned, Russell, dis Russell distinguishes the knowledge of acquaintance and the knowledge by description. Whatever we have, the name Aristotle, we, are, we know Aristotle through acquaintance. We are familiar with the term Aristotle. But the true meaning of the term can be attained through description only. So we know the present Prime Minister of India and that is a sort of acquaintance. But the true meaning of the term, the present Prime Minister of India can be accurate through description only. And he distinguishes between 
the knowledge by acquaintance and the knowledge by description and genuine proper names are names of the things which we are directly acquainted through our sense data we know the genuine proper names that this city is called by this name and their genuine proper names are actually tags they are simply they are simply tagging ordinary names and definite descriptions attached to objects as far as object have characteristics that satisfy descriptions they are this case descriptions now in case of descriptions it's somewhat different that is ordinary names and definite descriptions attached to objects in so far as objects have characteristics that satisfy the, the descriptions they are disguised descriptions if that characteristics are descriptive in nature then the proper names are not mere tags they are actually descriptive in nature so this is the difference between knowledge by acquaintance and knowledge by description and the theory of description of russell is actually how denoting phrases denotes through description and the essay on denoting was viewed as the paradigm of analytic philosophy it says how to do philosophical analysis how to dig into the dub grammar of a statement to bring out its true meaning and one of the greatest piece of philosophical writing of the 20th century it's admitted as one of the greatest piece of work philosophical work of 20th century and it actually shows how we can carry out the linguistic analysis in order to reach out the dub grammar that's the importance of this work and it provides the standard of analysis of definite descriptions that we have seen but specifically it targets definite descriptions and it stood unchallenged for half a century and i have already mentioned in the previous class it's only 1955 50 years after the publication of on denoting that strawson challenged pf strawson challenged this essay with some minor modifications and for half a century it remains unchallenged that's the significance of this essay and that's all about on denoting in the next class we will be looking into the logical atomism of bernard russell till then bye thank you